Number 8. Tel Kadesh Near the modern-day border between Israel and Lebanon, archaeologists found a mysterious collection of objects. Among the items, there was a clay figurine of Cupid, 23 glass gaming pieces, and two metal writing implements. But who did these objects belong to? It took more digging and some careful exploration to protect the objects, which had suffered some damage in the time between when they were buried and when researchers found them. But their persistence paid off when they located a fancy bone hairpin buried under the paving stones where the other objects were found. To find small objects like these isn't that strange, but to find them in one cachet really captured archaeologists' attention and imagination. So many items together usually only happened at the graves of younger people. So could the items have been placed by grieving parents at the site of their child's final resting place? An archaeologist who was fascinated by the items decided to hit the books and try to find out what they meant. He found a clue in an ancient document that had been compiled in the Middle Ages. In it, a story describes a young woman who gave her prized possessions to the goddess Artemis as an offering when she became old enough to marry. Even though we may never know the real meaning behind the objects and who buried them under the paving stones, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Thinking about that young woman bearing her most prized possessions in tribute as she set off to become a new bride is touching. What are your thoughts? Do you think she got her happily ever after? Number 7. Gigantia Temples Did you know that a group of temples in Malta are older than Stonehenge? The prehistoric temples found on the second largest island of Malta are considered to be an important site of pilgrimage for the area's ancient inhabitants. But what mysterious rituals took place there? And could the island be the lost city of Atlantis? Predating the Great Pyramids and Stonehenge by hundreds of years, the Gigantia temples have a legendary past, one that is connected to ancient giants. Gigantia, which means giant grotto in Maltese, was said to have been built by a female giant named Sansana in one day and one night. Dedicated to the Great Earth Mother, a goddess of fertility, the site was a spiritual place that attracted pilgrims from all over the world. They would travel from far and wide to see a priestess who went into a trance, became possessed by the spirit of the goddess, and doled out prophecies for those who needed them. One theory about the temples is that the temple builders may have been so knowledgeable about astronomy and construction because they were more advanced than others at that time. Strange, elongated skulls excavated a hypogeum of Hal Safliani on a nearby island looked very different from other people in the area at that time. But what does that mean? And why did they build these massive temples only to later abandon them and completely vanish? Like Stonehenge, there's still a lot of mystery surrounding the site and just how ancient people were able to move such massive stones. The megaliths that make up the site are said to weigh up to 50 tons, and experts think that they may have been rolled into place using massive roller stones, the size of cannonballs, that have been found at the site. Even the doorways and altars were made from massive stone slabs. Some experts think the rounded shape of the temples might have been made that way to represent the Earth Mother's shape like body. But it wasn't all about peace and love at the Gigantia temples. The discovery of animal bones and libation holes suggest that ritual sacrifice and liquid offerings may also have been a part of the pilgrimages made here. Who do you think built the Gigantia temples? And could the strange builders be connected to Atlantis, something Plato wrote about? Given the fact that he described how the remaining structures of Atlantis were scattered across several islands, and Malta's temples are found on multiple islands, it's not that difficult to believe the long-lost city of Atlantis could be where the giant temples are located. Number 6. Etruscan Pyramids A team of archaeologists made a shocking discovery when they were working in a wine cellar in Italy. While they were excavating at the ancient site, they uncovered a mysterious ancient staircase that continued well past the floor in the cellar. After working carefully to explore the site, they followed the staircase and ended up making an even more astonishing find two Etruscan pyramids. The tapering walls inside the wine cellar were the first clue that there was something different about this place. 
after following the sloping walls 10 feet deeper, they came to another hidden tunnel that dates back to the 5th century BC. As if that wasn't enough, they followed the tunnel and it led to a second pyramid. Imagine their excitement at making these discoveries. To find not one, but two pyramids is amazing. But there were even more surprises in that underground wine cellar too. Researchers also found evidence of an underground system of tunnels beneath the entire site. After painstakingly excavating two layers of fill, archaeologists found Etruscan pottery shards that date between 400 and 1000 BC, between the modern and medieval floors of the cellar. The discovery is an important one that shows how the Etruscans, who occupied Italy for almost a thousand years before the Romans took power, may have used pyramids similar to those found around the world to bury their dead. What do you think about these secret pyramids hidden under a wine cellar? Do you think there could be more structures found under the floors of similar buildings? Let us know your thoughts and comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Nabataean Stone Monuments Did you know that a culture lived in the harsh deserts of Saudi Arabia for 200 years? When researchers discovered a series of mysterious stone monuments in the desert of Al Ula, they realized they had stumbled across a long-lost culture that had inhabited the area around 100 BC. Known as the Nabataean, the people ruled their empire in the city of Petra in Jordan. So why did they leave so many towering monuments in Alula? Unlike other ancient cultures like the Egyptians, who built their monuments as separate buildings, the Nabataean people carved theirs directly into the rock cliffs. Their temples and tombs tower over the desert floor, but that doesn't mean it was easy to find them. Researchers had to use light aircraft and special cameras to survey the area and pinpoint the location of the archaeological site because the monuments were so well hidden. As researchers continue to survey the land, they have found burial sites, Bronze Age funerary landscapes, and burial structures. With not much known about the Arabian Peninsula during ancient times, the discoveries could have a huge impact on the history in the area and put Saudi Arabia on the ancient history map. Ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia get a lot of attention when it comes to discoveries, so this find is an exciting one for history buffs. After they surveyed the area from the sky, it was up to specialist team members to head out on foot, looking for evidence of animal species. And when they did, they came across something surprising. For a long time, many species were believed to be absent from the Arabian Peninsula, but painted rock art panels have shown previously undocumented animal species and vegetation that were around during prehistoric times. What animals do you think once roamed the deserts of Alula? Let us know in the comments. Maybe you'll guess what researchers will find when they compare the paintings to the animals that once lived alongside the Nabataeans. Number 4. Nan Madal On an island smaller than New York City, an ancient city once home to a deeply religious and sometimes cruel group is filled with stone columns so heavy, experts are dumbfounded. But the ruins of Nan Madol, ruled by the Sol de Lor people, were so terrifying that modern locals see the site as one that is extremely sacred, and most are afraid of the scary spirits that may still linger there. So what happened to these ancient people? Why did they abandon their city? And why, of all places, did they decide to build on top of a coral reef, part of the Federated States of Micronesia? The shallow coral reefs house imposing ruins, but there's one thing missing. Experts haven't found any art or carvings at the ruins. The island itself is made up of 92 smaller artificial islands that spread over 200 acres. Built from the 13th to 17th centuries, the buildings are now in ruins. But they were supposedly built by the descendants of two brothers who decided to start a religious community that worshipped the sea. The location next to the island of Pompeii, northeast of Papua New Guinea in the Coral Sea, might not seem like the best place to build a community. So the brothers brought columns of black lava rock from the opposite side of the island to create the foundation and walls of the platforms and lodgings. But it didn't take long for the native jungle to grow in and around the buildings, making them look even more intimidating. Still, even with such an imposing political, religious, and residential center, that doesn't mean there wasn't conflict. Sometime during their history, 
the leader of Nanmadol, who was said to be a tyrant, was overthrown by an outsider who allowed there to be multiple chiefs ruling the land instead of just one. Even today, the system of many chiefs remains. But there is still a lot of mystery surrounding Nanmadol. Most Pompeians believe the structures were built using magic to fly the massive black stone columns into place. And with no evidence to show how the structures were built, the true history of Nanmadol is still something of a secret. Number 3. The Taulas of Menorca A tiny island in the middle of the Mediterranean is home to a series of 12-foot monoliths that have sparked fierce debates. The Taulas of Menorca have a hidden past that could point to religion, astronomy, or even a place for healing. One thing's for certain though, these stone monuments were built by prehistoric humans who had some secret purpose for placing the stones the way they did. The small Spanish island where the stone monuments are found has a modern-day population of almost 100,000 people. Throughout history, different cultures have called Menorca home, including Jews, Brits, and Spaniards. So why do you think these ancient people built these towers? They are said to resemble Stonehenge. Their name means tables in the Catalan language spoken on the island, which some experts think mean they were used in religious rites. And when a clay perfume burner in the shape of a goddess's head and a bronze bull were found during various digs, the theory that the temples may have been a place where sacrificial offerings were burned in the fire pits to their god seemed even more likely. A prehistoric cave drawing offers another clue about the island's mysterious past. It had accurate representations of constellations, which would prove the place was a religious monument. By using the top of the Taula and viewing it at different times of the year, it coincides with different locations of the moon, making these prehistoric monuments a type of ancient calendar. Until researchers can piece together the origins of these monoliths, the true purpose will remain as mysterious as the island where they sit. Number 2. Chinese Terracotta Warriors One of China's greatest mysteries is the underground tomb of its Qin Shi Huang. What made the first emperor of the great country decide to build an underground moat filled with poisonous mercury? What secrets was he trying to hide? Born in 259 BC, Qin Shi Huang was the first son to the king of Qin who ruled over the kingdom that had been at war for more than 200 years. So it's no surprise that Qin Shi Huang would have an impressive burial complex. When the extended complex was discovered, researchers uncovered an astonishing collection of life-sized terracotta soldiers that were so unique. Each one had different clothing, hair, and facial features. But even though they had found 2,000 of the clay soldiers, Archaeologists believe there might be more than 8,000 in total. And the location of those missing soldiers? It's possible they're still hidden underground, but that doesn't mean it'll be easy to unearth them. The central tomb of Qin Shi Huang is massive. Experts have been working there for four decades already. It's one of the most elaborate tombs ever constructed. Huang is buried in an underground cavern that is the size of a modern city. But for anyone who thinks they can just dig until they find what's hidden underground, think again. Experts have taken soil samples around the tomb after hearing stories that Huang built a moat of mercury to protect his hidden treasures. And they did indeed find high levels of the deadly compound. The emperor was also known to take mercury pills because he thought it would help him live forever. So do you think it would be worth it to destroy the tomb in order to get inside and see what price of artifacts the emperor left behind? Leave your thoughts in the comment section and let us know if you think the risk is worth the potential rewards hidden inside. Number 1. Al Hajra, Yemen Deep in the mountains of Yemen, a mysterious medieval village sits at the top of a towering mound of treacherous cliffs. Built with solid walls to protect against invasions, these sandstone buildings are only accessible through one main entrance into the town of Al Hajra. It's a poor village located in the heart of Yemen whose buildings, all built hundreds of years ago, literally hang off the cliff face. Getting to Al Hajra is a long and treacherous trek through the desert, and once visitors get to the remote village, there's only one way in, through a massive fortress gate that is just as imposing as the village itself. When travelers do finally make it inside the ancient village, they will see something strange about the buildings. 
the lower floors of the houses have no windows. But was this because they were so fearful of being attacked? Not necessarily. Most villagers kept their livestock and grain stored inside their homes. And it's another reason why the homes were built so tall. Because the area is so small, architects had only one choice when building Al Hajra go up. And they did, building a massive town of towering multi storied buildings, some over 400 years old, that are sophisticated and advanced. It's surprising that an ancient culture was so ahead of their time. But would the views from the towering village be enough to get you to go to the top? Another surprising thing about Al Hajra is that the oldest copy of the Quran was found in the area, though no one knows how it got there and how it survived untouched for so long. A breathtaking sight that also includes another fascinating feat of engineering. The residence of the local Imam sits perched on a rocky outcrop that is not for the faint of heart or those who have a fear of heights. But if you can get past the trip to the middle of nowhere and are brave enough to pass through the fortress gates, you'll be rewarded with a stunning view of one of the most unique villages in the Middle East.